Mr. Jengapa, uh, the night isn't over. You know, I'm sure the, I'm sure the people at ISRO, the men and women at ISRO, will have maybe an hour or two to, uh, to you know, to, to exhale, stretch, stretch their legs and arms a little bit, hug each other. We saw those happy faces there. Uh, you know, but, but, but obviously a core team is not going to be able to get any rest tonight at least. Absolutely. They'll have to monitor everything. And plus, a 14-day, uh, you know, uh, experiment means it's, it's a very, very short period of time and they're going to want to pack as much as they possibly can into it. Yes, I think the first thing they'll do, I yeah. mean, after having successfully, uh, you know, soft landed on the moon, is to ensure that all systems are go. Because uh, there is a, as when it lands, there's a lot of jarring that's happening. Yeah, yeah. So they have to test these multiple systems. There are about 100, 100 subsystems that uh, need to be tested, including the fact that you're going to now allow the rover to roll down from its womb. So there also, everything that uh, you know, goes with it has to be tested. The power has to be tested, you know, the entire system where that's working. And let's not forget, uh, not only is the rover supposed to roll out in a couple of hours, mm. where once the dust settles, because the moon's gravity doesn't allow the dust to settle quickly. So once uh, it lands, the regolith just flies around and hangs about for about a couple of hours. So once that's uh, completely down, then they will check all systems go. Then they will start opening the rover plans for that. Maybe it might take six, eight hours, depends on their confidence levels, and pull out the rover. The rover is, as you know, about three feet by three feet. Yeah. It's a you know, very interesting sort of uh, thing. It has its own solar panel. Yeah, it yeah. communicates with the lander. And uh, apart from that, the lander itself has four or five scientific in instruments. So in the next 14 days, what they would do is, because this is an area that has not been studied. Mm. You have a, a, a you know, spacecraft land, so beyond just the landing, you will study, for instance, whether, you know, water ice that we talked about. The moon has no atmosphere, but yet it has temperature. So one of the probes is to find out that. The other one, which is very interesting, is, uh, uh, you know, seismic activity in the moon. Because if you're going to put a colony in the moon or put any structure over there, what is the kind of vibrations that happen? What is the yeah. kind of seismic activity? One of the probes actually do that. Okay. And, and apart from that, the temperature variations. You know, if we know what the temperature is on the surface. So one of the probes is going to go uh, a couple of uh, you know, feet deep to check out what is the temperature on the surface and the uh, you know, temperature below that. Mm. What is the temperature difference? So How the does the temperature on the surface of the moon compare with the Earth? Uh, firstly, look, the temperatures can go to 127 degrees. Okay, that's above the boiling point centigrade I'm talking about. On the South Pole or on the uh, equator? Wherever, okay. Even on the South uh, Pole? Even on the South Pole, yes. What happens is that... Uh, there's not so much sun no, there, how does it what get happens so is that the sun slants over there. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, because the moon is rotating at a certain speed, the same face of the moon always, uh, you know, the Earth gets to see. Otherwise, you would have seen the it's dark side of the moon, as they call it. Right? So there's always a dark side of the moon. But because of the heat of the sun and also the cold, once the sun goes, after 14 days, it uh, you know, sets, right? It can, the temperatures can drop to minus 170 degrees Celsius. There's no that atmosphere is, to trap the heat. Correct. And, and, you know, Antarctica is about minus 70 degrees. So you're twice the thing. So what happens is, if you do not have a So it can get twice heat, as hot and twice as cold. Uh, absolutely. And so this tremendous variation means that you must put in equipment, if you're wanting it to survive beyond one lunar day, which is 14 to 15 yeah. days, you need to build in... Firstly, a heater. So one of the plans that uh, the Artemis project has is to actually possibly have a fission reactor sitting there, a nuclear fission reactor to generate heat. So that if you're going to be living there, you'd have the kind of heat that you could survive, air conditioning as well, plus the Where structure. Where will the fuel for that come from? Uh, it'll be a nuclear fuel. I mean, you would transport it over there, just like you're building a thing. There's, of course, a lot of concerns about putting anything nuclear up front over there. There's a huge debate across uh, space communities as to whether we should be putting anything there. And tomorrow, if there's an accident, what happens? You know, your uh, containment and other issues that's there. So, but these are plans. How would you keep heat going there? What will be the kind of... Uh, fuel that you would use. These are all plans that we need to look ahead at. Okay.